The Church of Satan pursues a five-point plan to move society in directions that are considered to be beneficial to Satanists. The first point is the advocacy of general recognition and acceptance of stratification, which is no less than the elimination of egalitarianism wherever it has taken root. Mediocrity shall be identified and despised. The stupid should suffer for their behavior. The truly beautiful and magnificent are to be cherished, are to be cherished. Each individual must choose for himself his own aesthetic standards, but we think that there are certain elements of achievement that are undeniable, even if they are not satisfying to everyone. For example, one cannot deny the superior accomplishment inherent in a Beethoven symphony, a Michelangelo sculpture, a da Vinci painting, or a Shakespeare play. Many Satanists are working to create their own citadels of excellence outside of the cultural mainstream and have preserved the worthy from the past and continue to create new works of power to be revealed to those who will be appreciative. The second point is the enforcement of strict taxation of all churches. This will remove the government sanction of religion and force these parasites to live off of their own members alone, and if they can't, they will perish as they should. The Church of Satan has never pursued tax-exempt status and challenges all the rest of the world's churches to stand on their own feet. Let us expose... Let us expose the vampiric nature of the organized religions and see if they can cease their parasitism. Cease their parasitism. Third, we call for the re-establishment of Lex Talionis. Lex Talionis. Lex Talionis throughout human society. The Judeo-Christian tradition which exists secularly under the guise of liberal humanism has too often exalted the criminal over the victim taking responsibility away from the wrongdoer with their doctrine of forgiveness. Such thinking is a disgrace towards the ideal of justice. This must stop. Individuals must be held accountable for the consequences of their actions and not be allowed to scapegoat society, history, or other supposed outside influences. It should come as no surprise that many Satanists are part of law enforcement agencies and that there are a large number of people throughout this and other criminal justice systems who fully agree with satanic philosophy on this point. If the law is not being enforced, Satanists advocate the practice of seeking personal justice, but you are warned to be fully aware of the consequences of such actions in today's corrupt society. With the present state of affairs, the outcry may yet come to welcome justice back to stay. Fourth, Satanists advocate a new industry, the development and promotion of artificial human companions. These humanoids will be constructed to be as realistic as possible and available to anyone who can afford one. Recognizing that the human animal often raises himself through the denigration of another, this would provide a safe outlet for such behavior. Have the lover of your dreams, regardless of your own prowess, every man a king who can purchase his own subject, or contrarywise, by the master you wish to serve. Freedom of choice to satisfy your most secret desires, with no one to be bothered, is now at hand. What could be better for blowing off the tension that exists throughout our society and promoting healthier interaction? Finally, we advocate the construction of total environments, technologically up-to-date but theatrically convincing to be literal pleasure domes and places of amusement and delight. We have seen the beginnings in some of the major theme parks, but let us take them on to the heights depicted in films like Westworld. Here you would be able to indulge in whatever environment you can imagine. Recreation of past history would not only be right for these constructions, but science fiction and fantasy would provide fertile sources for many of these playgrounds. Resorts of this nature grow more abundant every year. 
Would the average person be able to spot a member of the Church of Satan? Since Satan has covered the total spectrum of economic and professional achievement, unless someone is sporting a sigil of Baphomet medallion or wearing the Baphomet lapel pin signifying an official representative, you really cannot pin down a Satanist by appearance and behavior alone. In their daily practices, Satanists are individuals who are enjoying their lives in the here and now. They eat what they please, dress as they please, and generally follow whatever lifestyle suits them best, so long as it is within the laws of their country of residence. There is no requirement for participation in ritual activity. The techniques presented in our literature are for members to make use of as they so desire. Some Satanists enjoy the social atmosphere of group ritual and seek others for this purpose. Many Satanists find their ritual activity to be very personal and prefer to remain solitary. Either path is acceptable to the Church of Satan. Indeed, there are no rules for frequency of ritual activity. Some traditionally celebrate the equinoxes and solstices as holidays, but of course one's own birthday is the highest satanic holiday of the year. The ritual process is often used as a cathartic to cleanse the individual of desires that could turn into compulsions if they remain unfulfilled. Thus such practices take the place of therapy. Satanists cherish their individuality and do not try to conform to other standards of normality. Also, Satanists do not proselytize, so you will not find yourself approached by someone in a black cloak waving tracts in your face. We have our literature readily available, and should some find the philosophy to be to their liking, they may approach us to investigate the possibility of affiliation. The general public would probably be surprised to find that they have been interacting with Satanists for many years, and that these Satanists will be some of the most interesting, fair, trustworthy, and enjoyable people that they know. The world, when more fully permeated by the primary values of Satanism, will provide a challenging environment wherein you can achieve much or little based on the level of input you can muster and the extent of your natural abilities. Yes, this is frightening to the masses wishing to sit back and be herded from one media hype product to the next. Our worldview challenges you to think and do something with those thoughts. As ultimate realists, we do not expect a large percentage of the human population to have the energy and discipline needed to excel, nor would a satanic society attempt to force people to do that which is beyond their capabilities. But we will not refrain from judging these people by our standards. Those who wish to lead a drugged existence, whether the addictive element is chemical or media, shall be recognized for the slaves that they are and held in contempt. They can continue their self-destructive paths if so desired, but they shall not be allowed to hold back those who want to achieve greatness. Don't worry, you who have been fooled into believing the paper tiger displayed by today's media. We Satanists aren't after your children, for they are probably as hopelessly mediocre as their parents. But we are moving the world towards a state wherein the freeloaders will either work or starve, and the parasites will be removed to wither and die. So you need only fear real Satanism if you are a criminal, a parasite, or a wastrel. Are you afraid?